know your people, mm. know your community, mm. and never, ever put them down. Yeah. Never say they're from a poor background, that's bad, never that's mind. Bad. They're from a poor background, rise their standards. Mm. Mm. Never say, oh, my school is, is in a poor area, we have mm. awful challenges, then mm. raise the challenges. Guys, today's interview is with Claire Walsh, head teacher of Mount Carmel Catholic Primary School in the London Borough of Ealing. Claire is a remarkable head. She's one of those people that literally imbues what we're all about, which is a passion for learning. Claire is a phenomenal head teacher, has been for 20 years, and the insights and experiences that she's gonna share with you today are absolutely phenomenal. We talk about how she builds community, how she builds trust and collegiality within a team of staff to build a real inspiring community of children and leaders who grow to be the best that they can be. Claire Walsh, lovely to see you. Okay. So I thought we'd start the show off by telling the audience a little bit more about yourself, who you are, what you do. Yeah, uh, my name is Claire Walsh. I'm a head teacher at Mount Carmel School in Ealing. Um, I've been head teacher here for six years now, sixth year. Uh, I was deputy head before at another school in Ealing, so I've worked in the borough now for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, a, it's a great borough to be in, and I've been head, obviously, of a school is uh, personally my dream. Mm -hmm. You know, I never thought everyone said, oh, you should go for head, you should go for head, and now I've, I've become a head, and mm -hmm. I love the job, love it. Fantastic. Yeah. Was that always like your dream career as a child? Yeah, so when I was seven, when I was seven, I sat in a classroom, and the the... The teacher was teaching a lesson, and it was it was it was an inspiring to say the least. And I felt at seven, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. So everything I did in my life, I learned how to play musical instruments. I went into drama. I did all the sports. Everything I could to become a teacher. And I did it. Got my GCSEs, A levels. Went to St Mary's University, uh, and studied there. And then got my job. And that's it. Twenty odd years later, still doing it. Wow. Excellent. Nothing, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. Best journey. And that passion still shines right away through today. And Honestly, that's still through today. Mm. You know, I, I admit that there are many changes in education. We mm -hmm. expect this. But if you come into a job of a headship thinking that everything stays the same, mm. you, you, you're misguided. Mm. It's, it's, it's dealing with everything that happens from from the time that I started education to now, the amount of changes in education, are, they're, mm. they're huge. What's but been the biggest change that you've seen in education, would you say? Biggest change is accountability. Mm. That's the biggest part. Um, I think some of, when I look at some of our young teachers, you know, with appraisal systems coming in, monitoring observations, they always mm. feel then they're not doing their best. And even when you tell them how wonderful they are and what a great job they're doing, they're still like, well, how do I make myself better? There's an mm. awful pressure all the time mm. on top of them. And that's really, mm. you know, we need to change that mindset. It's mindset at the moment that mm. has to change. And I just think over the years, there isn't that trust that I think that young teachers feel. Just, just mm. let us teach and let us do our job and, yeah. and do it well, which they do. What would be the most effective balance then, in your view, between managing that expectation and not having teachers feel overwhelmed? Because you mentioned that when you were young, the teaching wasn't the teacher yeah. that was teaching you wasn't very yeah. good. How do you make sure that the teaching is effective and it is to a high standard, but also managing that teacher's well-being so they don't feel constantly under pressure and scrutinised? The best way is to ask them. That's all we do. That's <laughs> all we do. Mm. So we had a, quite a rigorous observation and monitoring um, policy, which said, you know, you've got to be observed this amount of times, and that all happens. And and over the years, it's so interesting. We sat back and we had a, a peer review this year, where we had um, some head teachers from another school coming in, mm. and they sat with us, and they were very much, you know, coming in. I said, well, come in and have a look at our writing. So we had a whole day where they looked at writing, but mm. the the, the feedback back from the staff. So we sat with the staff and said, well, how did it go? They said, well, we all were in it together. Mm. We all were doing it together. So well, would you like your observations to go that way? So they, they sort of said, so we tried it. So we did a morning of maths mm -hmm. and myself and the SLT, there was four of us, we all had a focus each. Mm -hmm. And we went in and we could see across the whole school what the strengths were, loads of strengths, mm -hmm. small areas for development. Sure. But instead of feeding back individually to everybody where the 
we fed back as a full staff. So, right. so that's the next part of the journey. So you, you, you have to keep standards rising all the time mm. and the demands mm. all the time, but you have to give staff time to do it. Yes. You know, so for example, we like Monday meetings, you know, every week there was so much to tell staff and we'd be telling staff everything every, every Monday. Yeah. So by Tuesday, 10 o'clock, they're all shattered. <laughs> you've told us something new, you've told us this, so we changed it. So we do a thing called Connect Four. Wow. So we have a focus on writing. And um, so we just, we have the, the first session, we discuss what the issue is about writing. Mm -hmm. um, then we get some books in, so the, uh, the the teachers are spread across phases, and we talk about what's going on, what are the issues coming through in books, and then we, they plan a lesson together, mm -hmm. and then they all go and observe one person delivering that that, and then we have a feedback. Yeah. So instead of every Monday, you've got to do this. Don't forget your vocab. Don't forget your handwriting. <laughs> don't forget to have this. We said right, let's just stop. Let's mm. focus on what the school real development point is, mm. and it's all about writing. So that's what we focused on, and it and it works brilliantly. Great. It works brilliantly. The feedback so far from the staff is that they're getting, then they're not worried about people coming into them anymore. Mm -hmm. They're getting things done. It's part of their appraisal. Mm -hmm. So it's not another thing. Yeah. So everything they're doing, they just take a picture, they upload it onto their appraisal program, yeah. and job's done. So it's trying to find ways, but you have to ask them. Yeah. And sometimes you hear things and you're thinking, I can't meet that, mm -hmm. okay, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're just like, that's not where the school's going. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's managing those, the expectations from different members of staff. But generally, they all have the same moans and groans mm -hmm. and celebrations. Mm -hmm. And then they go, right, so how do we solve it? What's the best way together? So we're just trialing it this year. Mm, Next year, we'll turn around and say, has it worked? Mm. Can we make it better? Yeah. And then third year, we fully embed it. Anything yeah. should be on a three-year cycle. I love that. And yeah. why is it called Connect Four? What are the four components? So the four components are the four teachers. So we have somebody from early years, mm -hmm. someone from year one and year two, someone from year three and year four, and someone from five and six. Fantastic. So we had an SLT away day, where we just go away, we just look at the whole school, so like, what are the issues? Mm. Where, what do we have to address? It's got to be writing, because our progress wasn't as good as our reading and our maths. Mm -hmm. So we said, right, so how do we do this? And it was good because we had asked two middle leaders to come with us who are still working in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And they gave us the idea, should we just try it? Mm -hmm. And you know what, if it, if it was not successful in, on the 16th of October, I would have stopped it then. Right. I would have thought something else. Yeah. Because we still got the issue. Mm -hmm. We still have got to address writing. Mm -hmm. We've got to raise standards in writing. Yeah. So how do we do it? So if that, that is not working, then okay, that's fine. Change the route. How do we do it? But you've mm. got to bring everyone with you. Yeah. And that was before when I first started here. I was very much a very different leader. There was a lot of things that had to change. Where I say, right, we're just going to do it. And people said, there's too much going on. I could see it. Sure. I could see it. But I, I knew the longer vision mm. and the big picture. Mm. But now I'm in a, such a better place in the school. That's why you've been in a school for a good few years. So mm. to learn the school. So now I feel the school's going, starting. Right. Now I'm going to move forward with it. But then I'll just ask everybody around me. And I'll just ask the people, okay, so how do we do it? And, and there should be a HLTA who will say, well, here's a good idea. God, that's a great idea. Yeah. Everybody should be part of this. The yeah. governors, the, the SLT, and NQT, mm -hmm. and RQT. Someone's come over from, from um, New Zealand, I'll say, Okay, right, what do you think? What what's they doing over there? Yeah. Don't just say I'm in a different country or mm -hmm. that's not how you do it. Sure. No. How can we make it better for our children? And it's that collegiality that brings yeah. everything together and gets yeah. everyone working towards yeah. the same vision, isn't that's it? That's it. And I think if you have like subsidiar subsidiarity where you go forward, you start here. Mm. Okay, then collegiality builds on that next part. So if you start here, mm -hmm. build up to here, then hopefully the big picture is just all met by everybody. So it's not like Wait, a you've big lost me on, on that bottom bit. So, it, so, so if you have your sub subsidiarity, where here you've got your core issues about yes, what's going on, then you get everyone all involved and mm -hmm. build onto that. Then your top bit on top. Yeah. Then all of it just all of it comes together where you feel that everybody's just got the one vision mm. and that's the hardest thing yes the hardest thing is mm. having an idea because your idea then has to become a vision but a vision is not just an idea and it's not a dream mm. you cannot have a dream everyone has a dream about education okay. i'd love my school yeah. to be doing this 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 but actually the children coming through the door do not let me do that mm. i've got a lot of children with speech and language so i've got to work on speech and language so my dream mm. has to change to a vision sure what am i dealing with every single day and how do i build the certain steps to get to that mm. 
And what is your mm -hmm. vision? Okay, so on my website, I wrote it as a poem. Love okay, it. you have to read the website because it mm -hmm. really does work. Mm -hmm. Honestly, even it took me a long time to write, yeah. but I did it. And and every paragraph has got a part about the vision, what my vision is for parents to feel one that they've, they've made the right decision for the school, mm -hmm. for staff that when they leave, they feel that they've been nurtured and loved and they're ready for the next step. Love that. Um, for children, that whatever their barrier is, whatever barrier they have, that we can help them overcome it. Mm -hmm. And there's times where there are some children who come in here to a mainstream school and they shouldn't come to a mainstream school, they do need to have specialist help. And sometimes they're the hardest conversations to have with parents because they'll say, well, your vision is to get everyone over their barrier. Mm -hmm. But I'm only really limited. Yeah. I'm only really limited to what resources I have. And sure. some children need more than that. So that's a hard, that's always my worst conversations I've had mm -hmm. with some parents of actually they need more than what I can give them. Mm -hmm. But it is having that vision of making sure that everyone that comes here just feels part of the family. Mm -hmm. We've got an amazing community here mm -hmm. and, and that just has to not stop here. It's a bit, a bit Catholic in the way that be, before Vatican II, the walls were up. Mm -hmm. Now we just want our walls down. We want we have people coming in here. Yeah. We have everyone learning from us. Yeah. Our early years is amazing. Um, people come in and they're all writing notes about how brilliant it is and they're taking it away to their schools. I think fantastic. that's what I want. Yeah, fantastic. That's what you want. How do you build a community like that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I know that's not the answer you want to hear. Mm. I really don't know. Mm. I think, from my experience, when I came here, there was a lot of barriers that were up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not open to criticism, mm -hmm. if you're not open to development, then you are going to keep those barriers up. And yeah. parents notice that straight away. Mm -hmm. So over the past few years, parent view has got better and better. And mm -hmm. uh, now we're in about the 90% and you know, for people that are happy with the school and all of that. So I mean, it's a really good place. You're never gonna please everybody. Mm. But it's trying to understand what are the things that worry parents the most mm -hmm. and how do you address it? Mm. And then you've got to address it. Yes. That's the hardest bit because they've got action, to right? see the action. Mm. No matter if it's just a quick email or if it's a phone call, Sometimes some parents have got expectations of me that I don't know what their expectations are. Mm -hmm. And then they come in angry, they say, well, you know, I would, I would have liked this to have happened. I'm yeah. like, well, that's not how we do it. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the meeting, I always walk around, okay, so I need to change. Is that the best way? Do I change something from one parent? Mm. But if, it's, if it gets a message out there, then yes, I will change it. Mm. Because it's got to be where we've got this seamless community where you know things happen in the community and if we don't have that strength from the core mm. and leadership then of course it's just going to fall apart yeah. so it's all about you know being on the on, on the gate in the morning at mm. the end of the day sure send me an email mm. just pop in yeah do you know what you're going through a difficult time have a cup of tea yeah that's that's the core mm -hmm. of absolutely everything what i'm getting from you is it's a lot around there's a lot of questioning, even questions that are internal introspection yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Is that something that you've developed over time or is that something that's always been inherent within your thinking um, process? I think it's always been there. Yeah. I think it's just me. Yeah. Just all the time. You know, someone will say something and I'll think, oh, and I'll question it. Mm. And sometimes I'll spend some sleepless nights on mm. those questions. Yeah. And then after a while, I'll just, just put it to the side because it's not important now. But then sometimes someone will say, a child will say something, mm. and that will get me thinking, mm. oh, hang on a minute, well, why do we do it that way? Yeah. Why is that happening? I love that. And then, and then the best time is dinner time. Mm. So dinner time, they're all relaxed. You mm -hmm. go into a classroom and you say, you know, talk about your history lesson. They're all like, well, history is da 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 Right, all yeah, got when it. You're in the, <laughs> when you're in the, the, the dinner hall and you mm. sit down and say, oh, how is your history today? Mm. Oh, yeah, do you know we did? And then you get the truth. Yeah. And that's where... That's where I hear things from children and say, oh, yes, mm. right, I need to. You know, when you look at books, yeah. we look at books and you look at them and say, why is that happening? Yeah. And that's where you get your stories and that's where you talk to teachers and say, oh, right, so why is this? And they've got an answer. They've always got, they've always got an answer. Yeah. And it's good answers. Yeah. And, and that's where I feel still there's that, that mistrust of, yeah. like, celebrate your books, celebrate your marketing. And do you know what, that's so powerful that as a head teacher for 20 years, yeah. you're still at the dinner table with the children at times. Oh, absolutely. It's the best time. We just walk around and you sit with them and and they open up. Mm, yeah. you know, they tell you the little joke off, off the froobs. Yeah. But really, you welcome them in the morning, mm -hmm. you see them, 
you come back, you you do your work, but then dinner time you just do a walk around mm. and, and you just get a feel about You get a vibe, don't yeah, you? Yeah, how and they are. It's very it's very synergetic with taking your stuff off site. Yes. Because when you change the environment, you change yeah. a lot of things. You change the mental state of people. You yes. change the thinking process and yes. everything around yeah. that. Yeah. So that's quite that's quite powerful too. Yes, it is. It is. You've got to. The thing is, as a head, you're the only one who has the whole vision of the school. Or you know what's going on everywhere. Yeah. It it, it took me a long time to get my team around me, mm -hmm. and that's that is vital. No one can do it themselves. Yeah. If there's any head out there who says I've sussed it all, <laughs> they haven't. Well, you They've need got people, a don't team. you? Yes. I've got a brilliant deputy. She does she, her drive for rising stand raising standards in teaching and learning mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Great. She just has that love for it. Yeah. Then I have got an assistant head teacher and she leads in early years and that's her her strength is early years. Mm -hmm. But she also leads in inclusion and she'll come in and she'll fight for a child. We've got to get, what are we doing? And she just has this drive. Love it. So she's off that side. I've got a school business manager who I'm sitting there saying, okay, the finances, yesterday we were learning about finances. You mm -hmm. need to cut staff. You need to, very clear messages, right? So how do we do this to make sure no one's upset in the staff? Yeah. How do I do it? The children can still have all the help they need, mm. even though it's very clear I need to make cuts. Mm. But how do I do it? So it's calm and... Yeah. So I've and got so it matches your vision, right? Oh, one hundred percent. But you've got to keep on this side. Mm -hmm. and then you've got to make sure that bit's going all right. Yeah. And then you've got to make sure that bit's going all right. So yeah. when you've got all three coming in, yeah. and then I have another assistant head teacher, and her her drive is about you know teaching and learning, curriculum, making mm -hmm. sure that's all going. Yeah. So you've got to keep on your. It's getting the and right people in the right place, right? You've got to be honest. Sometimes in the head, you drop a ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But, but as long as you pick it up. Yes. So long as you pick it yes. up and you don't leave the ball there mm. and you're juggling one part, mm. these, these, and then you think, oh, I've forgotten about that. Yeah. I've got to pick that up and something else falls. Mm. That's just normal. And once you accept that you cannot do everything, yeah. that's, that's the biggest part. That, that's really interesting what you said about, especially what you said about questioning, because that's something that I learned a lot later, yeah. like a couple of years ago, because I used to be, what well, I've read this book called uh, Multipliers by Liz Wiseman, and it's okay. a fascinating book. And it's Is just it? all about how to, how to galvanize a team and how to treat a team so that you get the best out of everybody, yes. so that everybody becomes the best version of themselves. Yes. And one of the things that it talks to, um, talks about in there is like the automatic rescuer. So it was yes. like when something went wrong, I'd be like the first person on the button to fix it. Yes. But then what I wasn't doing is pulling the best out of other individuals and they just expected me to fix everything there. Yes. And you can't grow that way. Yes. Um, so that's really, really powerful and insightful to hear that in yeah. terms of the questioning process, because that's one of the things that pops up as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, every day you'd ask a question, mm. I'll be honest. Yeah. Every day you've got to ask a question of yourself or someone will ask the question of you. Yeah. Yes. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. A head teacher really is the biggest problem solver. If you can't solve problems, mm -hmm. because no matter how small it is down to uh, a tap not working, mm -hmm. or a teacher feeling really pressurized and going off on stress, mm -hmm. you've got to deal with all of those. Yeah. You've got to have the answers. Certainly. And, but you've got to be honest to yourself that you don't have all the answers. S and you sure. don't have to do it all. Yeah. Once you believe that, that once I had realized that myself, I realised, you know what? I leave everything at home. Yeah. If if uh, at school, mm -hmm. if I if I go home, I'm with my family. Yeah. The weekends are for my family. Love Holidays it. are family. Mm -hmm. But from Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. it is work. Got it. And you just keep the focus on that. Yeah. And and that's how it, the, the work gets done. Yeah. The twentieth of July always comes. Yeah. Children always leave crying because they're devastated. Parents are crying. They're leaving the school, and everything's done. Mm, yeah. So when people come in, said I'll never get it done. You will. Yeah. Absolutely. July will come. And, and building that team to help and support in those times of challenge is really really important it, it's it's hard it's harder now especially in schools like in Ealing mm. because of recruitment yes and I had you know I was like, I need more teachers to come in with more experience but actually I don't I need a strong SLT yeah if I've got a strong SLT teachers got to come and go okay. but if I can keep this team and we've been working a few years now and even now we've just recently had Ofsted and we're like for like the next four years we're on for our outstanding journey yeah so we're on it together mm -hmm. now something was going to happen in those four years mm -hmm. I mean some may leave and change but at the moment we've got our vision where we want to move forward got it. so that's that's what we've got to have but 
teachers will come and go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we have a lot of Irish teachers. I cannot compare with Dubai at the moment, yeah. where the, the, there's like little mini islands over there where they mm. all go over to play the Irish sports. They're all over there yeah. and having a great time. I can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you can't. can't. You can't all compete I've with the weather for a start. I can't right? the weather. <laughs> I can't do anything tax free. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, to get anything around dealing is too expensive. Mm -hmm. So they get accommodation, get flights. I can't compete with that. Yeah. But what I what I can offer them is the best one year mm. and no matter our, our, our whole talking about developing staff is all about if they're here for one year then we develop for one yeah. year and we don't just say, you know what, not very good, let's just leave them. Yeah. We keep it till the very last. Like, how can we develop you? Because you are not going to stop being a teacher. Yes. You're going to go somewhere else and be a teacher. If we can help you on your next step, that's what we should be doing. That's not gold. just stopping off and saying, no, do you know what, not very good, oh, never mind. Sure. It's not, there. it's not that here. We've really got that drive of let's... Because we're passionate about children and then being educated. And, yeah. and if you can help someone on the way, then that's what we should do. What was school, go what was school like for you when you were growing up? Um, I was a, I used to grew up in a very working town mm -hmm. and education wasn't high on the agenda at all. Right. So the school was a, it was a Catholic school, it was, it was a great school, I loved it, I had great friends. Mm -hmm. When I went to secondary school we went to, it was a, another Catholic school. And all, all through, you know, I was captain of the netball team, captain of the hockey team, Lovely. I wanted to be the top of everything, yeah. <laughs> I just had that drive. But school was wonderful even though Poverty was very high in the school. The school doesn't exist anymore now because mm. obviously they'd closed it because it was so, it wasn't moving children on. And maybe I could have got better GCSEs, maybe I could have got better A levels in a different school. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. Do you think that there's a link between you being involved in sport, music, and everything like that, and sort of that sort of shaped who you are yes. today as a leader? Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, my PE teacher, so I'd say to her, I said, I'm not the best netballer. Mm. She said, but you're the leader of the pack. She'd say it. Yeah. So I remember there was a, a football game coming up. Now, girls football in those days, we're mm -hmm. talking a long time ago now, but <laughs> it, it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a local school and they said, and she said, you'd be the captain, Claire. And I was like, no, I can't. I don't know anything about football. She mm. says, it's not about the football. Yeah. She says, it's just, you get them in, you get the team ready, yeah. you get everything organised, you've got the kit ready, you've got them ready, you've got the water ready, you've got everything ready so they can mm. do what they can do. Yes. She said, it's not about telling them how to be the best. That's mm. her job. Yeah. She said, but what you do is like the organisational skills and when mm. you're on that, she goes, you, you, she goes, you really need to see yourself when you're playing netball. Mm. You just have to, no, move there. You could see <laughs> before things could happen. Yes. So that's something that I don't know if you can get in life or not. I think it's just a natural thing, which I would never see. But there's things here that I wish I had seen mm. and I hadn't, yeah. you know, because you can't see everything. Yeah, but at least there is a skill of saying, right, okay, I can preempt. There's something that's going wrong here. Right, okay, I need to stop it before because yeah. I know if I don't, this will happen, that will happen, that yeah. will happen. I did so an interview kind of um, just yesterday or the day before with a guy called Clinton Ford from the BBC and he would and I was saying to him exactly the same thing about how just like playing sport as a youngster shaped the fact gave me the foundation oh. to become a leader yeah. within an organizational capacity yes. so that's really really interesting oh I think it's everything yeah I think it's the teamwork because you've got to think of others you cannot yeah. think of yourself yeah and I do remember like playing ten, um, tennis I think it was and I just couldn't it was just such a single sport for me. Yeah. I didn't have a team around me. So you wanted and that I just team didn't, environment. I just, I, either you are or you aren't. Yeah. And there's some people who are so driven sure. and, you know, and just keep it. And that's great. And they will be great leaders. Yeah. But having a team is just, team sports, yeah. I think, sells it. Who inspired you as a leader? Um, different people mm. at different parts of your life. I had a primary school teacher who, who was inspirational. She just... She just knew me inside out. Mm. And, and so being a school of lots of children, how could she just know me? Mm. But yet the person sitting next to, her, to me, mm. she knew her inside out. Okay. And if you don't have that rapport with your students, if mm. you go in as a teacher and you stand and teach and they do the work, you'll never get the best out of them. Yeah. They, they will never want to shine and show mm. off for you. Mm. So that was my first part. My dad. So but he was he was a, a he was a teacher, and he just he just had the lovely calm manner of there was so much going on of needs in that the school that we were in, yeah. and he just dealt with them and just showed love to them and Fantastic. and just had that sort of care for children. Yeah. 
and, and uh, I think over the years it's just different even even now I get inspired by teachers walking in the door yeah Fantastic. you know it was just I just heard there's a lesson the other day where the teacher would use something that I've never heard of some computer flicker or something another new fandangle thing that's coming in yeah and I think oh my goodness and my deputy went to see it he said she said it's just brilliant and I'm, I, thought, I must go and tell him mm. even though I haven't seen the lesson yeah but now I want to go and learn I want to go and watch one fantastic and it's that see. reciprocal cycle of oh, constantly learning isn't it constantly learning sometimes I walk out of lessons and I go that was just brilliant. <laughs> Love it. That was just amazing. Just Love that it. one word or that phrase or the way you did that. Yeah. And then I pass on to somebody else. Yeah. Well, here's a good idea. Why don't you go and have a look at that teacher? Because Everybody's, they've got it. You know, yeah. so that's where the whole journey goes. Yeah, you know? fantastic. So in terms of you've been inspired by your dad and other, mm. and, and other phenomenal leaders, what would you say was being, has been like the big challenge for you here at Mount Carmel? Um, and how did you change it? The biggest challenge when I first arrived was consistency. Mm. Things were not consistent. Mm. So when I asked about maths, there was inconsistency in maths. When I asked about writing, it was inconsistent. When mm. I asked about how we relate to parents, it was, in, there was, it was just, oh, we, we do it this way, we do it that way. Assessment through the whole school. Sure. I arrived here and I was actually pregnant at the time. Right. And I remember walking around, it was been the, the, the first week, and I went into one year three class and they were doing assessments and I went to the next class and they were doing a different assessment. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, how are we getting our levels? So I thought, oh my goodness, I'm opening up a can of worms. So mm -hmm. by the time I'd walked all up to year six, I could see everyone was doing something different. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, how are we all feeding into what, in those days, what, what is a, a 2A and what's a 2B if we're all doing different? Mm -hmm. So I thought, I remember coming in here and think, oh my goodness, what's happening? <laughs> I could see parents weren't happy. I could see things weren't going as well as what I perceived because I'd, I'd, I'd seen the school I thought I want to really do and there was lots of very good things in the school it was I'm just picking on small things yeah. but I knew that things had to become consistent and that's the hardest thing because I'd say to one but we don't do it that way yeah and how did you overcome that through training and through slow processes yeah. okay right so we all are going to do this mm -hmm. and we're going to do it and it's using the same language yeah. all the time Brilliant. all the way through so we didn't have we don't really have really had a behavior issues in the school but actually what one class was doing was different from another sure so then we got together and we wrote behavior policy mm -hmm. and we took all the staff's ideas okay what's acceptable mm -hmm. what's definitely not acceptable and what you know so it's okay but yeah. need a warning yeah so then we did a traffic light system but it came from the staff yeah so right. then all of a sudden they're all on board yes so everybody does it so yeah. everybody has it but that yeah. it took me a long time to learn that at yeah. first I felt because I was the head I had to have the answers Same. but when you change around you go actually when I ask them mm. what do you find you think actually it's better yeah sometimes I feel a bit of a fake asking them yeah and I hope they don't think that I'm a fake asking them but I really you, they're there at the chalk face every day mm. they're saying well actually this is what's acceptable that is not acceptable acceptable we did it we ordered it together and mm -hmm. then everyone and even now a supply teacher will walk in and they'll say oh no you, you, you've got to go down the ladder you yeah. know you go that, that's that's Brilliant. not that that's your warning yeah you know and the children know so even a supply teacher can walk when in. when you can get a strong. supply teacher to come yeah. in and follow that same philosophy yeah. for that, one day yeah you can see that yeah. it's clearly it's embedded worked. Yeah. That's right. Because the children, yeah. the children are like, oh, you've yeah. done the <laughs> Got it. that. Got but it. it's the language you use. And it's got to be all the time. It's, yeah. Yeah. What would you say has been your proudest moment as a head teacher? Um, a bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's been many, many, many proud moments. What, what's, been, <coughs> what's one that springs to mind? <coughs> Oh, proud. Um, that's a hard one. It's a really hard one. Yeah, because I'm sure you've had so many, right? Or what's been something that's made you proud over the last... <sighs> Two years, let's see. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> right, okay. My most proudest moment as a head was uh, in July last year. We'd been through a difficult time. We had some deaths in the community and we were celebrating our 50 years celebration. Um, of the school being open and um, we had to invite the Cardinal mm. and during a time where the community was really sad we still had to pull out this amazing celebration where mm. we'd invited all the, the people from the diocese, we had invited all top people 
and we had a wonderful outdoor mass. It took a long, a long time to, to get there, mm -hmm. to prepare it. We had a marquee. Mm -hmm. We said to the parents, we'll, we'll, we'll do a hog roast for free for mm -hmm. you. Everyone just come and have a picnic. Yeah. And it was a lovely afternoon and and I sat there, I did have a moment, and, and everyone all had the Prosecco out, yeah. and everyone was relaxed, the whole school. We had a band playing, mm -hmm. and I just sat back, I thought, this is wonderful. Right. The, ch the children were running around, they were having, parents weren't worried because they knew they were in a safe environment. Yeah. They all were chatting with each other, parents who hadn't chatted with each other were chatting with each other. Mm -hmm. And I just sat back and thought, we just got the Cardinal. And everyone felt this amazing, it was really uplifted. Sure. And then two weeks ago, because Mount Carmel do things like this, we had a closing right. celebration. So even on the day Ofsted arrived, we had mm -hmm. the bishop arriving at the same time. Wow. So, but everything's planned. Yeah. It's how it works. <laughs> and it worked really well. And then we had a ball. Now, mm. who does a ball in a school? I don't know. Mount Carmel does. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was a three-course meal. We hired out a, a, a hotel. 240 people arrived. Fantastic. It was like a wedding. Wow. And the, the first band, we, had a, we, had a, we, had, we bought in a professional band, but the first band was a parents' band. Mm -hmm. And these six, seven parents had been practicing, and everyone was like, well, let's see what they're like. Let's see what they're like. Yeah. And I had to introduce them. And... So I said, everyone stand up, because I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it to be good for them. Yes. So they walked out onto stage, and everyone, I could see everyone's a little bit wary, oh, the parents, oh, look at them, yeah. oh, how nice. And they, they were like a proper band. Phenomenal. The standard was so high. And then I sat back, and I just looked around, I thought, this is, this is what it's about. These are parents who have left. They've, they've, they've left, they're, you know, they're not even in the school anymore. Yeah. They've come back. I had head teachers from the, the, the borough here. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show that if you become a school and a leader where everything is all in your little, you, you don't experience the yes. big picture. Yeah. And the biggest thing is when things come together. Yeah. And yes, we have great SATS results. Children leave every year really strong, ready, ready for secondary school. Mm -hmm. But it's bigger than that school. Mm. And you've got to embrace everything yeah and to see those parents up there shining they're still talking about it yeah. the community's still talking about it yeah they're proud moments yeah but they're not something that's in your job description and that's the most powerful thing that i that i get from you is this sense of community yeah. this sense of collegiality this sense of everyone yeah. coming together because ultimately it's like we think like, what is school for right yes. because if it stays within the four, wheel, four walls yes. then it's not yeah. as powerful as it can be it's yeah. got to stretch out yes. to the community and, and that's where it becomes and really the powerful. challenge comes from the everyday expectations yeah. that's what the biggest challenge is in how was how was, how was offset for you so Ofsted, Ofsted came in, uh, the process isn't a great process, I mm. feel. Mm -hmm. I just feel the process is very hard on a school where we have done really well and raised the standards across all areas. In fact, in our letter it says in all areas. Mm. And I've said, I've said times, I think, what if Ofsted really want to move forward, I feel they just need to move grades. Yeah. As simple as that. Mm. Because you can have a school that's outstanding mm -hmm. and it's buzzing on the day. Yeah. Then... Afterwards, the head could leave. Yes. The SRT leaves. So is it still outstanding? So Great. how do they keep that outstanding? How do governors keep it going? Mm. Governors change. Yeah. So I feel, if I wanted to know school, so if mm. I was looking for my own children, I wanted to look for a school, I would probably look at, I'd go and read the Ofsted letter. Mm -hmm. Right? Forget the grade. I yeah. don't even look at grade. Sure. I never look at, maybe because I'm in education, I don't look at anybody's grade. I look at what the letter says. Right. And I read the letter and say, right, okay, so that's the areas that they're addressing they're mm. good areas yeah. therefore that school's doing a really good job on those areas sure. so actually that's quite good yeah so i feel put them into a good mm. requires improvement we're all requires improvement every school yeah. requires improvement right because <laughs> now they're, they're changing the barriers so therefore we've all got to improve to get to what ofsted has an ex expectation of us and even if you're outstanding you still require improvement right because it's um, ongoing growth and development and if you speak to any outstanding head, and I speak to many, because mm. that's what I want to say, is like, how, what, what is that makes you outstanding? Mm. No one can give me the, the same answer, or wow. a, a answer. Yeah. It's just having everything ticking along really well at once, but sure. most schools do. Yeah. It just depends who walks in the door to inspect you. That's if, the difference. If you were to be launched in to become the chief of schools yeah. throughout, or the minister of education yeah. in this country, yeah. 
What's the one thing that you would change? Graded. Graded in league tables. Got it. Grading, given a school a grade, it can, there are many schools out there I would say are absolutely outstanding mm. and they, they've got a quiet improvement next to them. <laughs> That's what gets to me. Is it quite, is it quite, um, quite non-objective? I it's don't know. I honestly, I really don't know. Mm. I just, um, there's always something else, mm. you know, even the schools that have got the outstanding mark, mm. you know, they, they, they're honest themselves, yeah. they'll say, no, we're, but we're still, we're still working hard, we've got to keep it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's awful pressure, because yeah. the only way is down. Yeah. Not that it should be down, it's not down, a good school's a good school. Yeah. And, and I had to write a letter to my parents and I was so, ups I was so upset that we hadn't got the outstanding grade, you mm. know. But there were certain lines in it which said, you've made progress in all areas. Now many yeah. parents would read that and not even think anything of it. To me, sure, that means four years of hard work to say that we progress in mm. all areas. That means everything. It means absolutely everything <laughs> yeah. to me. So then I turn around and think, well, that's, that, that's, that's the crux that we're doing well as a school, mm. we're flying as a school. And the, letter, the line I put at the end, I thought, how am I going to sell this? Because I'm so proud of this school. Not the process right. of Ofsted is the process of Ofsted. Yeah. And they've got their process to go to, that's fine. Mm. But I said, I disagree that, that we are not a good school, yeah. but we are not an outstanding school. I said, Mount Carmel is a great school. Love it. And that line, greatness, yeah. is just bigger. And you create it's your bigger. own definition of what that oh, is, absolutely. right? absolutely. I'm going to put that everywhere. We're yeah. a great school. Love it. Don't, Love it. don't put me into a box. And if you were to give some parting words of advice to an aspiring head teacher, maybe someone that's been in it for one or two years, yeah. what would you leave them with? Um, know your people. Mm -hmm. Know your community mm -hmm. and never ever put them down. Yeah. Never say they're from a poor background, that's bad, never that's mind. Bad. They're from a poor background, rise their standards. Mm -hmm. Never say, oh my school is, is in a poor area, we mm -hmm. have awful challenges, then mm -hmm. raise the challenges. Because the language then, then feeds into yeah. the environment and how people think then about it. Then it goes it. out into, yeah. if, you're in, if you're in a, if, if, if your school is about feeding, or oh, we've, got, we've got a block of flats all around me, you know yeah. some heads are like, they've got a block of flats all around me, it's all council estate, it's really, it's tough. Yeah. And it's yeah. up to you then as a well, leader then to determine it. what that means. You, 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 you've got to change that. Yeah. That's your job. Mm. You, don't, you don't say, oh, well me, mm. oh, I'm rising the standards. Fantastic. And that's what I'd say. Even in a school like here where they, they come in, it's a lovely area, but mm. there's still a lot of issues. Yeah. Where I don't say, oh, well, they're fine, they're not, you know, never mind. No, sure. they're the ones. They're the ones you take and you mould and you build them up yeah. to be the best that they can. And as a leader, you, you, you never dumb down anybody. Mm. Mm. Everyone, you've got to have that high standard mm. and they have got to get there, right. everyone. Talking about consistent language, I'm going to go into a quick fire round now. I'm okay, going to throw a few on. questions at you okay. and just show the first yeah. thing that comes into your mind. So in terms of consistent language, what's your most overused phrase in school? Hmm. Not a clue. <laughs> Community. What's one of the common phrases that you use? It's more than community. Mm. Oh, I need to think. I don't need to cut that, but oh. it's more than that. It's more than community in this school. It's more about that Catholic ethos. Mm -hmm. It's more, but it's not a word that you use. I want to get a good word for that. I want to get a good come word. Let me one. come back, come back, let me think of that in the background because I want to get a good word for you there. What's one of your most favourite books you've read? Um, I've just been reading When Adults Change, Everything Changes. I heard about that one. I need to get it out. Need to get it's it out. a very good, I'll read it for the second time. Yeah. I've read it. I read it when it first came out a while ago. Mm. And I'm just reading it, rereading it now because I think um, I need to get it into my head because I actually want to bring it in for CPD for next year. Brilliant. So I'm already thinking about next year's CPD. Love it. And I think once, it's a very strong message in yeah. it, but it is about changing mindset. And, and you have to change mindset yeah. if things are really going to change. What's your favourite thing to do outside of school? 
just sit and read with my children. Love it. So we have a lovely we have a reading couch. Mm -hmm. We both sit there, three yeah. of us sit there together, and we yeah. read one book together. Love it. So even though they're in year one, year three, we've just finished Harry Potter, mm -hmm. but we've read it together. Yeah. And it just calms everything. I love that. It's very simple. I love that. And what's your favourite holiday destination? Spain. Yeah. Usually, we just break, uh, we have a place in Spain, we have a family place in Spain, and we break up here 20th or something of July, and usually I'm on the flight with the children and the husband on the 23rd, mm -hmm. where for about three weeks, it takes three weeks to get everything out of your system. And, and, and you need it, and if you don't, if you don't prioritise your own health first mm. and relaxation, mm. you will become stressed, yeah. you will go under, so. because the job will allow you to do it, yeah. but at the end of the year it does go, people talk about craziness, yeah. but it's crazy, and you can't even define the craziness it yeah. goes to, but if you do not cut off, and I'd say probably until week day 12, mm. I'll probably pick up a book after I've got everything out of my system. Yeah. It's Great. crazy. Great. And talking of wellness, technology is a big thing now. Yeah. How do you use, what's your favourite app on your phone, first of all? Uh, my favourite app probably would be Facebook. Yeah. It's the one that I use. Um, I'm not an avid user of Facebook, but mm. at the moment I've got some very good, uh, I'm on the school leaders. Um, forum on that Fantastic. but it's not about that it's about the fact that I can see my best friend and her son growing up in New Zealand yeah. I can see the basic thing I'm not on it as in like religiously on it yeah. but when I do go on it I do have that insight about what everyone else is doing yeah. and I think that's important because then sometimes it's just a little message are you okay yeah that's yeah. why technology and it's, isn't it? it's absolutely everything yeah. um, but at the same time, it's like I, I don't use Twitter, I haven't brought Twitter into the school, mm -hmm. I haven't brought any of those on, on the thing yeah. because sometimes it's just overload. Yes. It's overload. Sometimes I feel I even overload the parents with a few text messages. Mm -hmm. I think I'm overloading them and like, oh, again. Yeah. So I need to be very careful on, but yet you still want to get your message out. Yeah. So the message goes onto the newsletter every week. It's old fashioned, yeah. but I love it. And they all get the message. Yeah. And if they're not, they can ring or drop an email to me. And it works. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. Fantastic. Claire, yeah. it's been absolutely phenomenal okay. speaking with you it's and good. learning more about your phenomenal school. Thank you. What what is the final words that you would like to say about the great things at Mount Carmel School? The great things of this school, which is unique, because that's mm. what you've got to look at, what makes this unique from everywhere else? Mm. You know, the, the, the phrase that we use a lot is, what would Jesus do? Love it. Being a Catholic school, you'll see there's posters around the place. We say, what would Jesus do? Mm. Our job is to make these children ambassadors of Christ. Great. That's it. Mm. But we've got to let them cope with all the demands when they leave at 11 years of age. Yeah. And that's what I feel our journey is. From the minute a child comes into the school, we know them. Mm -hmm. We know what their barriers are. Mm -hmm. We know what their journey will be. We know what their success is. We do not dumb down, we build up. Mm -hmm. But when they leave here, they really do leave. And I know they leave. And I'm just glad when they walk out the door that I've done the best I can. Yeah. I couldn't have done anything else. Yeah. And that's what I've got to leave, you know, that's what makes you sleep at night. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's been Pleasure. really, really powerful. Pleasure. Zoom in. Guys, that interview has left me shaken. I've learned so much from Claire in terms of community, in terms of leadership, in terms of questioning for development and progress, not only for the children, but for the wider community as a whole. We had a phenomenal conversation about how Claire goes about growing a community, and given her 20 years plus of experience as a leader, there's some remarkable takeaways that I'm sure would be fantastic for you. So, thank you very much for watching.